Hello everyone, I am Rohit from Talent Battle and I welcome you all for this informative video series for InfiTQ developed by Talent Battle. This video series will be helpful for you to get all the updates about InfiTQ and we will be posting all the InfiTQ related learning videos on our YouTube channel so that it will be easy for you to get all the related material and it will be like one stop solution. Don't forget to subscribe our YouTube channel for off campus updates and make your career path easy with talent battle. Also do join our WhatsApp and Telegram groups. I have added the link in the description section. In this video, particularly we will be discussing about some Python questions which are asked in the InfiTQ examinations. So let's start. In the first question, if you read the question, consider the following Python function for a vehicle management system. An objective of the code is to record the details of the vehicles. So if you check the respective code which is given, there is a function called vehicle record with some parameters and there are some if else looping conditions, conditional branching statements are there and depending upon the condition check, we have to identify whether this will particularly uh, record the details of vehicles and the records are like this which are passed to the input as a function. So this is the registration number. This will be my mileage, this is my vehicle type, then purpose of the vehicle, kickstart, then number of gears and miles per run, right. So this is what we have to add it and what is the question now? What will be the optimal class structure if this was to be rewritten in object oriented program? So what we have to do is we have to map the functionality which is provided here in the Python language with the availability features of object oriented program. Now if you check there are vehicle types mentioned two wheeler, four wheeler and the purpose is commercial and a commercial four wheeler is also mentioned. So if I check this I can consider that within the features of object oriented programming I should go with the concept of inheritance where my derived class will have the features of base class. Okay. Now if I check the options which are given to us in the option A, they are mentioning that four independent classes, vehicle, two-wheeler, four-wheeler and commercial four-wheeler can be there. Uh, a class structure will be like this with four independent classes. Then we have a second option like three classes with inheritance. That will be two-wheeler and four-wheeler which will inherit from vehicle class. Option C is four classes with inheritance like two-wheeler, four-wheeler and commercial four-wheeler. Now one thing that we have to focus here is if we take the four wheeler part or four wheeler class then either normal four wheeler or a commercial four wheeler will share the same properties right. So we can work on the inheritance part on this. So my vehicle uh, class can have four wheeler and commercial four wheeler right and this will be sharing the same properties from the main class that is vehicle and two wheeler will be my separate part of the vehicle right. So if I check the fourth option that four classes with inheritance where two wheeler and four wheeler will get inherit from vehicle. So vehicle type I can say. So considerably vehicle will be my main class and it will have uh, two classes those are with the help of inheritance properties it can be two wheeler and it can be four wheeler. Whereas commercial four wheeler is going to inherit from four wheeler because the properties of four wheeler such as uh, type of four wheeler then uh, it comes under the purpose that will be different, uh, number of gears will be same. So mileage almost uh, nearly same for four wheeler and a commercial four wheeler. So all these are the properties that can be shared. So we can say that commercial four wheeler will be my class that comes under the category of four wheeler means it will be inheriting the properties from four wheeler. So main uh, structure of classes will be like this, main class vehicle, then two wheeler and four wheeler will inheriting the properties of vehicle. And within that four wheeler, we will have one more commercial class of four wheeler, commercial four wheeler, which will inherit from four wheeler. So if I go with this structure, option D is the correct option that will satisfy the requirement which is provided here and it will be an optimal class structure in object oriented program. Moving to the next question. Next question is Alistair is a Python developer who has written this particular code and he desires the output to be 123 Volvo. Right. So this is expected output that we are working on. 
but he is unable to proceed due to an error. So we have to identify that. Now if you cho check out the code, say a function is there and within that function we have an uh, object uh, declared. Car ID and car name are the parameters, those are being passed. And within that functions we have uh, car1 equals to car123, comma Volvo, the object is created, car1 and it passes the argument like 123 Volvo. So 123 will be my car ID. So it will hold this value and car name will be my Volvo. Right. And within the print statement, we are working on these cases of car1 dot car ID and car1 dot car underscore name. So the question is choose two options from below which you should implement to get the desired output. And the note is given like line numbers are for reference only. So we have to choose two options from the provided one. So that this code will be modified according to that and it will execute and give us the output as 1, 2, 3, 1. Now if you check out the options which have been provided here A, B, C, D, we have to choose 2, 1. So in such questions we have multiple options that we have to check or we have to identify the correct one. Focus on the options which are incorrect and you discard them so automatically you will get that uh, part. Okay. Now if you see here the double underscore is given it means that car id is my private member of the class. And for such cases, we have to go with the getter and setter part function that needs to be implemented for accepting the value and the setting or modifying the value. So if I check the first option, add a method to the car class as follows, like say method name is get car ID self and it, it is returning the car ID. Now if you see in this function get car ID, the nothing is mentioned about the car id returning car id so how it can return the car id so syntactically it is incorrect so it will not give us the output so this is my incorrect option as far as this function is uh, syntax of this function is considered second option is like add a method to the car class as follows get car id self and it is returning self car id which is a private member of the class right so it matches over here so i can say that option b is my workable option it will work now we will check C and D where my line number 4 can be modified because my output will be coming from line number 4 in the print part. So you can see car1 dot car id and car1 dot car name is given. So if I check the line number C that print car1 dot get car id the function is called that we have uh, assumed here in the second option after modification if my second option is correct and then car1 dot car name. So this will give me the car id and this will give me the car name 123 and Volvo right. So C looks good it is workable B is also looking good it is workable and now we will cross check whether D is fine or not and if it is not then we can discard it and B and C will be our correct answer. So in line number 4 we can modify print part as like car1 dot car id. Now you can see directly car1 dot car id is mentioned whereas it is a part of class car where it is a private member and we cannot directly access that member outside the class. Uh, so that's why this this a, this portion of this particular print statement will not work. Car1 dot car name it is fine, but this part will not work because of the reason of private member mentioned. So I can say that option B and option C is my correct option. And after making this modification, you will get the output like one two three volume. Okay. Moving towards next question. Considering the following code snippet which is written in Python and we have to identify the output of this particular code snippet, right? So we will see the logic first and then we will check the output. Now according to the function is mentioned here with the parameter that is num and some if else conditions are there. First if condition where my num is less than 1 and in the else part else if is there like modular division of 2. Again the function calling is there. And again in the else block we have modification with the values plus function calling it. If I start with 8 which is passed as a parameter to the function. So currently at the starting my num value will be 8. Then I will be checking the condition that if my 8 is less than 1. So it is false means it will go into the else part. In the else part it is checking that num value modulo division 2 equals to equals to 0. Now this is true somewhere. So I will go in the this particular statement. So what the function call will have num is 8 right now minus 1 so it will pass 7 and it will go back to the calling function again. Again it will check right 7 is less than 1. When 7 is less than 1 
this condition is false it will come back to the else part and again it will check the modulo division for 7 so 7 modulo 2 equals to equals to 0 this is false condition when it is false it comes to the else block and it will have the modification of the num value right now my num value is 7 plus function num minus 2 7 minus 2 is 5 so 7 that i get first again it is a calling of function with 5 so again it will go back and call this part again it will check 5 less than 1 again false coming to the else part 5 modulo division 2 equals to equals to 0 again this is uh, false so we will go to the else part and again else part we have 5 plus function of num minus 2 right now my num is 5 so num minus 2 it will be 3 again it will go back to the calling function so it when it is 3 again it will go back and again it will start calling this function when it is 3 so it will check the condition 3 less than 1 again this is false and 3 modulo 2 equals to equals to 0 is again false so it will come back here so you got a value of num that is 3 plus function 3 minus 2 is 1 now it will check again over there and it will be num is minus uh, 1 less than 1 so 1 less than 1 is false condition right it is equals to 1 so when it is false it will come back over here so 1 modulo 2 equals to equals to 0 again the false part and when it comes to the last case of return you got 1 plus function of 1 minus 2 that is minus 1 okay now if i check these iterations and if i add these num values whatever i have been uh, provided with so 7 plus 5 12 12 plus 3 15 plus 1 16 so this is the output that i received and when this function of uh, minus 1 uh, that value is passed so it will control transfer to this case and it will check as minus 1 less than 1 so this is true in the last case and it is true means it will return 0 and the program termination will be there so i got the values as far as the logic and the flow of the program is and the final answer that i got is 16 so if i check the output on the compiler you can identify here so the same program put it and if i execute this i got the output as 60 okay so moving towards next question how many stars will be printed after executing the below python code so again the code is given and we have to check how many stars will be there in the output so if i check i have two variables num1 is equals to 5 provided and num2 is equals to 4 provided while checking the condition num2 is greater than equals to 1 right now yes because my 4 is greater than equals to 1 so it will print this part so my first star is printed then for index in range so for loop i have got the value 1 2 num1 is right now 5 plus 1 so 1 to 6 i will be checking this loop and again this print end part is there so second now it will be num2 is minus equals to 1 so i can write this like num2 equals to num2 minus 1 so 4 minus 1 3 print star right and in this way my loop will be in the workable part until and unless this condition is satisfied whereas my for loop starts from 1 to 6 with the value okay and when i execute this uh, as far as the loop is concerned and the printing statements those are part of this particular code i will get the output as 7 so if i check the output you will get seven stars those are being printed on the screen once i execute this now if i uh, change the indentation of this right so you can see if the print uh, indentation is inside the for loop it will modify the value and we will get some more stars right but you have to make sure in such programs or in such questions the indentation part because that will affect the output of the program okay so i hope you understood this moving towards the next question Consider the following Python code snippet that have been provided here. And in the class A, we have one class A where a private member param1 with the value 200, right? So we have a param1 with 200. And we have an again object self param1 which is 100. So this is my class value. And we have one more object value that is 100. I will write like this object value right self part then in that same class we have one more method 
that is method 1 and line 1 is there in the second part static method is mentioned where method 2 is been considered as a static one right static method line 2 is there and object 1 is created for class a and the method 1 is called with the help of that object and we have a line 3 again here now the question is fill in the blanks at line 1 2 and line 3 to get the output as 3 0 2 right so we have to uh, identify the line 1 2 and 3 from the given options uh, purposefully so that after executing this code you will get the output as 3 0 2 again we have to choose two correct options out of five so i have already mentioned that when you come up with such cases where you have to choose multiple options make sure that you first identify the incorrect options and discard them so that it will be easy for you and it will consume less time of solving and then remaining options will be automatically correct instead of putting it in the cross check part so if i check one by one whatever is provided to us in the option case so uh, going by line 3 because that will be the output part so if i seek the option a uh, line 3 is self dot method 2 right so you can check uh, method 2 is a static method so directly self dot method 2 will not work in this case so this will be the incorrect option that i have now if i check the option b uh, class a dot method 2 it looks correct because we have a method Two, which is a static and which is again a part of class a so it might work so we will right now check it with the other line again option c class a dot method 2 again it is looking same so it might work in the class option d you can see method 2 directly method 2 cannot be called so i can discard this option so option number d is discarded and option number a is discarded after checking the one line so it will save my time in such case uh, by using this method and option e last option again it is looking good because method 2 is there so all these three options with line 3 are looking fine class a dot method 2 moving towards the next part of the line so going one by one see b line 1 can be like this class a uh, param 1 is my private member so if i put here uh, the line 1 which is given in the option like say class a dot param 1 equals to class a param 1 the class value plus 2 plus class a dot param 1 right this will be the uh, modification as far as the given part of option b is concerned and line 2 will be like this print in the same option i am uh, discussing print class a class a dot param 1 and line 3 will be class a dot method 2 right this is given i am checking option number 2 so if i execute this and if i check that the class a dot private number uh, private member param 1 is equals to it will give me the value of this that class a param 1 plus 2 the value is param 1 value is class value is 200 plus 2 so this will be 202 plus class a dot param so self uh, called object will be called in this case that is object value so it will be 100 right with calling function so it will be sorry uh, with the class a dot param 1 it will be 200 because of the value so 202 plus 200 it will be 402 right so when it is 402 the total and if i pass this value to class a dot param it will be printing the same this method will be called from line 3 so method 2 will be called and then in the method 2 you have a printf statement that is class a param 1 that will give me the output as 402 if i check with the option uh, 2 uh, b second option so what is the expected output we have that is 302 and what we are getting is 402 so i can say option b is not workable with this code the code looks uh, fine but when i execute it implement it the option is, uh, output value is 402 but we are expecting the output as 302 so b is gone now we have remain with the only two options so definitely these two will be correct c and e and you can cross check it with the available uh, options that have been provided to you Right. So, if you check here with the option C just for the information, uh, param 1 class A param 1 that is my 100, uh, 200 sorry, 
plus 1. So this will give me 201. And self param is again been called. In the line 2, we have a print part of uh, param 1 plus 1. So whatever it is. So this and this will give me 302, which is my uh, expected output. Okay. So the option number B, sorry, option number C and option number E are my correct output for this particular problem statement. Okay. Thank you.